Can you tell people what you do for a living? Здравствуйте, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, I do politics uh, in the sense of practical politics. That is to say, uh, whenever you see someone shilling on the internet, someone like me in the background has wrote has written those talking points. That's essentially what I do. That's what the political operatives do. So a lot of journalists are now asking the question about nukes. Even Trump is talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's a possibility, at least uh, tactical nukes? I don't know. And the reason I say I don't know is because, yes, Russia has a huge stockpile of nukes. But do they work? Considering that um, we've already seen this, and this is public information. Of course, some of it is only in Russian for now, but uh, we've already seen what happened in various other departments of the Russian military. So, for instance, their counterintelligence department had, uh, throughout the last three or four years, immense amounts of money given to them, to, these to the counterintelligence department, to use it to bribe Ukrainian politicians and make the potential invasion easier, so as mayors to surrender the cities easier and whatnot. And the vast majority of that amount of money ended up being pocketed by the commanders. It never even crossed the border, let alone uh, reach to any attempts at bribing Ukrainian politicians. That kind of corruption seems to be endemic throughout the Russian military. So as a result, the question it begs the question, uh, who is to say that the nuclear department of the Russian military isn't at least equally corrupt as the logistics department, the artillery, the counterintelligence, which have already been proven to be deeply corrupt and as a result, uh, very differently, inferior in field as opposed to uh, in official reports. So do they work? Yeah, let's assume they work for the sake of the Let's assume they work. Uh, then there is also, of course, the, the logistical question in itself, because uh, launching them from uh, deep Siberia, that, that requires uh, serious logistics. And of course, everyone would see it before, um, before it reaches Ukraine. So it can be taken down. Uh, to, these days, um, most of the countries around Russia have their own uh, anti-cruise missile uh, systems. Uh, and considering that China has declined any support for this, I don't think China would be very happy to see a nuke being launched from next to its borders, <laughs> essentially, even though it's headed west and not towards them. But I don't think they'll, uh, they'll take that lightly. It increases drama to the situation. It increases drama. Uh, now, there is some uh, unconfirmed information that some of the nukes have been moved closer to Moscow rather than... Uh, okay, let's assume that is the case. That's still a huge di distance from Moscow to Kyiv. Still enough time to see it. Uh, of course, it would create a lot of damage and it would kill a lot of people. But would it help the war effort? And the answer is murky. Maybe it would, maybe it won't. But I'm still very... Uh, concerned about this. Would it work? Um, uh, one of my collaborators who works even closer with Ukraine uh, on the information side, he's like, Russians have a strong chance of nuking themselves if they try it. And then that happened in North Korea. Oh. Uh, there were satellite images, a little bit murky, like yeah. we still don't know whether or not yeah, they, they nuked themselves once. They, they also uh, dropped uh, heavy artillery on themselves in uh, North Korea and Russia too. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the first month of the invasion, at some point, they tried to launch some longer distance missiles and they ended up shooting it at, uh, at their own ammunition depot, uh, just 100 meters uh, forward, uh, because they were uncalibrated, because the equipment hasn't been maintained and upkept, because of the corruption in the Russian military. But let's assume they work. Let's assume that uh, it would help the war therefore. Would they use it from a moral standpoint, a uh, backlash from the international community? Maybe Putin himself would give the order, but I doubt that the military command would be willing to execute the order. Because just like in the United States, just like in China, just like in any other country that has nukes, it's not the decision of one person. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And considering that uh, Volodya himself has found uh, uh, himself a little bit uh, on the wrong side of his own military command uh, over the last month or so, especially after they, they f uh, fell uh, the, the front fell in Kharkiv. Uh, I don't think the military, their military, would execute the order. At least not uh, in a full-scale nuclear holocaust kind. As for tactical nukes, uh, you know, this thing has happened before next to our borders. Uh, tactical nukes have been f f thrown even on Serbia. Um, very small ones. Yeah, that's why they call tactical nukes. Uh, 
should everyone else other than Ukraine be seriously concerned? Well, if you're part of the military, yes, but if you're a regular person, no. Uh, tactical nukes uh, usually produce a radiation event where they fall, maybe a few hundred meters around, uh, maybe three kilometers around, but that's pretty much it. So unless uh, Russia wants to bomb, I don't know, Chernivtsi, Chernivtsi, uh, but even if they bombed Chernowitz, that would still not affect us. Right? It would still cause a massive international upheaval, even oh, if oh, it's yeah, the smallest uh, mm -hmm, nuke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will happen. But considering uh, how many illogical things have already been tried by Putin and by the Russian army in the field, it cannot be fully excluded. Mm -hmm. It cannot be. I mean, morally, uh, Putin would. Uh, I, I can see him trying to give that order. Whether the military would execute it and whether the nukes work, that's anyone's guess.